Hello and welcome. Today what I'd like to talk about is the really simple process of diffusion. Now for most of us we learnt this in high school or in chemistry and just to run through the basic chemistry of it before we uh, before we talk about the specifics for human biology. Let's just imagine that we have a bucket of some material and just to remind you at the moment you know the simple thing we learnt at school was that this bucket would be water and we have sort of a bunch of stuff you know here we go water but do remember it could be any other substance whatsoever and uh, what we do is we toss in another molecule of some type but we toss it in down one end of the bucket what we find with diffusion is that the kinetic energy of these elements, these new elements we've poured into the bucket here, at the end of the day we'll spread them out randomly through the other so we, ended up, we end up with an even distribution within the solvent. So diffusion in a sense is making uh, an even distribution within the, uh, an even distribution of the mixture. So that's what we learn about in chemistry, but let's have a think, where does that apply in the human body and where's a good example of it? The first thing we have to remember is that the human body has a lot of cells. And those cells have cell membrane. And cell membrane is fundamentally a barrier that separates one side from the other side. And for diffusion to happen, we need molecules that can actually move through this membrane uninterrupted. So the actual process of diffusion is changed slightly in the human body because we are asking these molecules to move without any interruption across this barrier. So it means that only some molecules can actually move by diffusion through the body. And the best example I can give you in the human body is in the lungs. So we're going to spend a few minutes just talking about gas diffusion in the lungs. And as you know, when we breathe, we're breathing in to take oxygen in. Remember, at the end of the day, that oxygen is going to supply our mitochondria in cells to produce energy, which is ATP. And in that process of producing ATP, it produces waste in the form of CO2 and in the lungs that CO2 is expired. So lungs have a two-way process here. Lungs have a process of taking in oxygen to put in the red blood cells of our body to distribute around all the cells of our body so all our mitochondria can use that oxygen to drive a process to produce energy as ATP and the waste product of that process is carbon dioxide that then travels back through the red blood cells as the carrier to the lungs to then be expired through the air. So lungs are a simple transfer process. So what actually happens in the lungs? Well to really simplify the story of lungs what we have is cell membrane and on one side of that cell membrane is the blood and on the other side of that cell membrane is the air that we breathe. And we need to understand what the concentration of these two critical gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, are in both situations. In the air that we breathe, oxygen, and I'm just using partial pressure of oxygen so it doesn't matter about the measure, but oxygen is at a concentration of 100. I'll do oxygen in blue and we'll do uh, carbon dioxide in pink let's say and CO2 in air is at a concentration of about 40. In blood CO2 concentration now remember this is actually in the red blood cells of blood so we've just eliminated the red cells from this story to make it simple but that doesn't actually make any difference. The, the carbon dioxide pressure 
the carbon dioxide concentration in blood as that blood is returning to the lungs is about 45 and as on the other side of that story the oxygen concentration in blood as it's flowing into the lungs is at about 40. So let's think about our simple diffusion story. Diffusion is a process that tries to equalize concentrations. So if we look at this and we decide that oxygen wants to equalize concentration, which direction is the oxygen going to run? Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's going to run from the, the high concentration towards the low concentration because it wants to try and even out these two numbers. And which direction is the carbon dioxide going to run? The carbon dioxide is going to run from the high concentration to the low concentration. So can you see what's happened here? What has happened here is carbon dioxide is being taken out of the blood and put into the air, while simultaneously oxygen is being taken from the air and moved into the blood basically by a process of diffusion. So what's the critical assumption here? The critical assumption here is that this cell membrane can allow diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen without interruption. So the good news is, and we, you already know that, the good news is that that is actually true. So in blood, in cell membrane, oxygen and carbon dioxide can travel straight through the membrane uninterrupted. So this is what happens in the lungs. Oxygen diffuses from the higher concentration air side into the blood, and carbon dioxide diffuses from the higher concentration blood side back into the air. So at the end of this process, as the blood leaves the lungs, let's just go down here, we'll extend our membrane down here, we'll remind ourselves this is the air side and this is the blood side. As the, as the blood leaves the lungs, the carbon dioxide concentration has fallen. So what colour are we doing CO2? I think we were doing that in pink, weren't we? So the carbon dioxide concentration has now fallen as it's gone through the lungs. So that is now down at around 40. And the oxygen concentration in the blood as, it's, as it leaves the lungs, and that's in blue, isn't it? The oxygen concentration as it's going off to leave the lungs will have gone up to 100. Which is great, because now the blood has a lot of oxygen, little carbon dioxide, and that will then circulate to the cells of the body that can, as I said, take the oxygen from the blood to the mitochondria, from the mitochondria produce ATP, and from the ATP, pro from that process, produce our waste CO2 that will then cycle back to the lungs. So you can see Diffusion is a critical process in the way that lungs work. That is why breathing in high concentration oxygen, low concentration CO2 can then be transferred through the blood, through, to the blood to supply our cells with the oxygen they need and to remove the, the carbon dioxide that they don't.